Today I'd like to go over a few steps required to help Ubuntu 12.04 desktop run nicely in a Hyper-V guest. I started working with Hyper-V a few months ago um, with some initial skepticism on how friendly it'll play with Linux distributions. And after going through all this, I've come to the conclusion that it actually is more friendly with Linux guests than um, something else like VMware, VirtualBox, would be and the reason is is because those other two environments require you to install uh, what they call guest additions or additional software after you install the OS and one of the things that I learned through this process is that Microsoft actually contributed code to the wind or I'm sorry not the Windows kernel but to the Linux kernel as open source which means that a lot of these distributions have been able to bundle this open source code with their operating systems um, and I'll show you how you can find those kernel modules later, but there is a blog article posted by one, it looks like uh, he's an employee at Microsoft in our Hyper-V program on how easy it is to install Linux guests, and I'll post a link to this in the video description, but it's actually pretty cool. It's not without its hiccups, um, and that's what this video is for. I'm going to go over a couple things that I believe are one of the major hindrances in using it in a day-to-day -day environment. The laptop I'm on now is running Windows 8.1 Pro tried installing Ubuntu and CentOS on here. Neither of them would take. Um, my Ethernet and graphics driver is too new. Um, I'd have to use something as bleeding edge as Fedora 20. And even that is very buggy with NVIDIA's new Optimus feature. So Windows 8.1 it is, and I run Ubuntu XFC in a virtual machine, which actually works quite well. And I'll show you how I accomplish that. OK. so. What I'll do is I'm going to start up this virtual machine. I installed this ahead of time. I use my deployment server, but you can do an install via ISO, network installation, however you want to do it. But this is a vanilla installation. I haven't really touched it since the initial install. Um, when you're watching me go through these steps, I'm going to refer to the article that I already drafted up and published. I will also include a link to it as well. So if you want to copy some of the commands, there's a couple config files that I put in here too. Um, so you can copy and paste those as well from the article. And um, as I go through the video, I'll try to pan and zoom around as much as possible. However, you may want to consider viewing this in full screen and at the highest video quality that your bandwidth will allow. All right, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is boot it up and the first issue that I notice is that I won't see any of the um, boot progress. Um, there's some issue to where the boot screen doesn't show up properly. Um, with a graphical install, it's not the end of the world because you'll eventually, uh, once the X server starts, you'll eventually make it to a login prompt. So some people may not be perturbed by it. I personally want to fix it, and that's the first step in the article here, so we'll go through that first. So what we want to do is we want to change the grub settings. So we'll fire up a terminal here. And um, since we're in a GUI, um, eh, we'll use Vim anyways. No, I don't want to change the color scheme. Actually, it's leaf pad. Ah. Oh. Did I mention this was a vanilla install? Okay. Bring this guy up here. All right. Um, if you, s I've demonstrated this in a couple other videos too, but um, just to reiterate this, I don't want the quiet splash. I don't like the boot screen. I'd rather see what it's doing. The more data I can see on the screen, the better. So I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm also going to keep it from changing away from the console resolution. I believe it's 640 by 480. Um, a lot of times um, for the terminal, it'll try to change to a resolution to what it thinks the monitor and graphics card supports. Whatever the reason, it guesses wrong, and the display never seems to show up correctly for me. So I'm going to tell it not to do that. So keep it at the council resolution. I saved it. Close it. And I'm going to update Grub. All 
All right. So just to show you what I did, uh, I'm going to shut down the virtual machine. And you can see it's not showing me any of the shutdown messages because this, the terminal resolution is, is not working correctly until we reboot. All right, so the machine is shut down, so I'm just going to start it right back up, and we should see the boot messages as it comes up to the graphical login. Okay, so we're back at the graphical login, and we were able to see the progress of the messages as the machine booted up. But with that in mind, the second thing we are going to do is disable the graphical login session. And here's why. If I go here into the settings here, I'm going to look and show you what I can do for my screen resolution. Okay, I can only go up to this resolution. This is as high as I can go. The laptop display panel that I'm operating on supports uh, 1920 by 1280 or by 1080, whatever 1080p is. Um, that's what it supports. But the Hyper-V console window will only go up this high. And here's the reasoning on that. I did some research trying to search how to change resolutions and eventually I came across a blog post that had some answers by some either, I don't know if they're Microsoft employees, but at least people that know a great deal about how Hyper-V works. And a lot of them will say you were limited to resolutions like 1620 or 1600 by 1200. I know mine was different, but the point that they were trying to make is that if you want to do any resolution other than what the console window is supporting, you need to do some sort of remote desktop protocol, RDP, VNC, what are some other ones, and then like SSH if you just want to shell. But basically what they were trying to lay down is that this console window is designed to get your machine up and running. So this is like the end goal is to build a headless server. This is the temporary monitor that you've connected to the machine. After you get this machine configured, you should be using some sort of uh, remote access. And when you think about it, in a server uh, environment, you don't have people access the server by using your, let's say, your KVM over IP devices, or they're not walking into your computer and plugging in a monitor. No, you have some sort of remote desktop protocol. And that's what they should be using here. You don't need to be providing people with access to your Hyper-V manager anyways. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off this desktop environment because no, in theory, no one's going to use it. If it's just sitting here running, it's going to be using extra memory. Actually, let me back up. So you may ask, you know, why don't you just turn on VNC? We are going to do that, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, you can run VNC a couple different ways. You can run VNC on your existing X session, and you can run it on an entirely separate X session. We're going to run VNC on an entirely separate X session because if I run it on this X session, we're going to be limited by the same resolution issue. So we want to run it on a new X session. So the first thing I need to do is I need to turn this one off. So let me bring up a terminal here. And just to make sure I'm following the article, let me pull this back up. Since I typed it out here, I'm just going to run this. Hopefully it transferred. Ah, no clipboard. Oh, well. I don't know if this is the best way to do it. Um, basically, I'm bringing up the upstart file for uh, the, the display manager. And what this does is it starts on run level, uh, anything that's not run level 0 or 6. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm commenting out these lines. I don't know if this is the best way. You can do your own research on the best way to turn off the graphic manager. This worked for me without a problem. So I'm going to save it, close it, and reboot the machine. So again, we're seeing our nice, pretty shutdown messages because we have the console terminal turned on, and now we're booting back up. There's those, uh, any kernel modules that you see with HV underscore are those Hyper-V modules that I mentioned that was contributed by Microsoft.
All right. So we're booted back up to a graphic prompt. So at this point, it pretty much looks like a server install because we're booting up just to the graph, or not the graphical login, but just a terminal login screen. All right, so I have the server back up. It's loaded up into the console. Um, there's no GUI loading at startup anymore. So I'm connecting through it through PuTTY to make it easier for me to copy and paste commands. And also I can use a bigger font that helps you see it better as well. So first thing we have to do is we have to install VNC server. I'm going to use this package. There are many available. Um, I'm using this one. Okay, now the rest of the configuration that you're going to be making, um, notice how I have these all at user prompts in the article. You need to be making these VNC configuration files under the user that is going to be running VNC. So when you log into VNC, you're going to log into the machine as that user. So it's whatever user you created at installation. For me, it's Andrew. So I just need to make that clear. If you run all these VNC setup commands under root, when you connect to that VNC server, you're going to be logging in under the graphical root user, which is bad. You don't want to do that. So make sure you're running these VNC setup commands under the user that you're going to be working on when you're using the machine. So I'm logged in as user. I'm going to create the VNC folder. And I'm also going to be creating the X startup script. This is what's going to run when the VNC server is started. Because remember, this is running in a separate X session. So I'm going to mark it as executable. And I'm going to have this content in it. Um, this line here is where we start the XFCE session. If you're using something else like GNOME or any other type of graphical display manager, this is where you would change it. What you would change it to, I don't know, but this is where you would make the changes. All right, so we're going to save it. And this is the command here that you would use to run it. Um, I'm going to run it now just to see what happens. Since I'm launching it for the first time, it's asking me to set a connection password. I'm just going to set it to something simple for now. And we're running. Um, let me see what my IP address is here. 133. And I'm going to connect to 172.20.0.133. That's fine. It's not encrypted. I mean, for me, it's running on the same box, so it's fine. All right. And we have our own VNC session. Now, you notice it's still not the correct resolution that we want. I'll show you how to fix that when we create the upstart script. But the good thing to note is that we have a working VNC session. If I bring this down to window size here, you can see that I'm not actually controlling what's in the console because the console is right here. This is like if you were to connect a display to the virtual machine, this is what you see. Yet I'm running in a remote VNC session like here. So our resolution restrictions are independent of what the Hyper-V manager is allowing us to do. All right, so I'm going to disconnect this because we are going, next thing we're going to do is we're going to stop the VNC service. And just to further drive the point home, notice that I've been launching VNC server under my regular user. We're not running this under root or anything like that. That's important. The last thing I want to do is I want to create a simple upstart script. So this will launch automatically when we boot up the machine. So I'm going to create an upstart script called vnc-server.conf. So let me switch over to root here. And I'm going to edit this file. This is creating a new file. You won't see it there yet. And I am just going to copy it word for word because uh, I'm Andrew. In your case, you're going to want to change this wherever you see Andrew here and here. You're going to want to change it to the user that you originally configured VNC server to run. Because remember, we're not running this as root. We're running it under the user level. The other setting you're going to want to change is the resolution that we're running the VNC server in. In my case, on my laptop, my native resolution is 1920 by 1080. So when I run it, I want it to be full screen with my native resolution. Um, you can change yours accordingly to however you want to run it. All right, so I'm going to save that, and I'm just going to run service vnc server start.
start. All right, so we're running. I'm going to make sure it's still running. It is. And I'm going to connect to that same address again. That's fine. Put in my top secret password. And you can see that we are now running under the full resolution and in full screen mode. That is awesome. So we have a full virtual machine. And honestly, it runs pretty good performance, considering that this is running through VNC. Um, the graphical performance is pretty impressive. It's almost like working on a local machine. All right, so we now have a fully functional graphical Ubuntu desktop running as a Hyper-V guest. If there's anything that I was unclear on or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, li uh, to leave a comment either on my blog page or on this video. I do try to read and respond to every comment. It helps me build more stable environments as well as help me see where I may not have been clear. Thanks for watching.